Okay, we have another interesting integral here today. We've got the integral from zero to three of e to the minus x squared dx. Okay, this one can be kind of nice or kind of frustrating depending on your perspective on this. The thing we notice here is if the bounds were different, this is just the Gaussian integral. Like the Gaussian integral is gonna be when this upper bound is infinity. If this were the case, we just have a known value for this. This would be square root of pi over two. We'd be done in two seconds. But the problem is not to infinity, we're going to three, and that's really where the issue is on this. And the other problem we have is if you look at the indefinite integral of e minus x squared dx, there's no solution for this in terms of elementary functions. So the actual, so the way we actually express this is gonna be square root of pi over two times the error function of x plus c. And so for the problem we have, there's not really a way to work it out. We just kind of use this same formula. It's a little different for the definite integral. The solution, this is just going to be square root of pi over two, error function at three, where the input here just comes from our upper bound, assuming that the lower bound's zero. And so we have this for our solution. This is kind of nice, but the problem is you don't want to look into it too deeply because you might be disappointed at kind of the circular reason that this is just a definition right here. So we just want to look at what is the error function of x. Our definition for this is going to be just 2 over square root of pi integral from 0 to x e minus t squared dt. So then if we input a 3 in here, we want to look at what is the error function at 3. Well, all we need to do is just plug into this upper bound and we have this integral from 0 to 3 e minus t squared dt. So if you just take this and plug it back in for the error function at three, what's gonna happen is square root of pi over two times two over square root of pi, that's just one. And so we get back this, but this thing right here, this is the same thing as our original problem. It doesn't matter that it's a different variable with a definite integral, we could switch it. And so a way we really haven't done anything here, we just have kind of like a convenient definition that's gonna make this work and it all comes out, but it doesn't really tell us anything. Now, one thing that is kind of nice on this, if you look at what happens if we just stick a limit on the front of this, if we look at the limit as x is going to infinity of this thing, kind of, here, let me just kind of do it this way so we're applying the limit here and here, just because I'm kind of being lazy. So if you have the x here going to infinity, again, this is our Gaussian integral, square root of pi over two, two times square root of pi times square root of pi over two, this limit is just gonna be one. So we have this defined so that this comes out to one. Now, one other thing we can do to kind of make this a little maybe get a little more insight on this is we can look at what we can do is look at a really similar integral what we can do is start it at three and go to infinity of the same thing e minus x squared dx and this right here has a really similar definition to this it's just going to be in terms of the complementary error it's going to be just in terms of the complementary error function which we write as erfc on there at three and for this one, we're using as the input the lower bound, and this has to go to infinity because our definition for the complementary error function, again, really similar to the error function, we're starting at x, this time instead of having it at the upper bound, we're going to infinity, and it's just gonna be e minus t squared dt. But I forgot this, I forgot this part, this two over square root of pi here, that's gonna make this work. Of course here, when x is three, you get back this exact problem. And so I think one thing that we can do with this is if we actually add these two together, then we're gonna know exactly what happens. So if we have the integral, if we have this integral from zero to three, the problem we started with, and we add it to this one, going from three to infinity, e minus x squared, then doing it this way, there's no break in our bounds where we have three as our upper bound, three as our lower bound here, we can actually put these together and write this as the integral from zero to infinity, e minus x squared dx, and we know this again, it's gonna be the whole thing, square root of pi over two. And so then using this, if we just actually take these two values, because it's the same thing, we have this is equal to this, this is equal to this, if we add these together, we should come back and end up with square root of pi over two. So we'll write this out really quick, square root of pi over two, error function at three plus square root of pi over two, error complementary error function at three. Well, I can factor out square root of pi over two here. And then what we have is the error function at three plus the complementary error function at three. But this value right here is actually defined to be just one. So this part goes away and we end up with the same solution that we had when we added before. This is just square root of pi over two. So there you go. I know kind of in a way there's like no information there because everything's just kind of like circular reasoning, but it's also kind of a nice way to define it, a nice way to be familiar with the terminology and how it all works. 
Anyway, so there you go. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.